So tonight's talk is about kombucha. So as part of our way of offering you opportunities to create a better and healthier life, um, kombucha is something that I've been drinking for years. And um, as I got to know Dr. Brown and he started working here at the practice with us, I realized that he was a master kombucha brewer. <laughs> and because he is a master kombucha brewer, um, he can now embark his knowledge and expertise about kombucha on all of us and explain to us the health benefits and why it's a wonderful thing for you to um, drink. So I don't want to steal his thumber, thunder, but to give it a little bit of an introduction, um, current research is telling us very, very amazing things about what is called your microbiome. So your microbiome is the relationship between the bacteria that live in and on you and your health. So we know that there's a correlation between you having healthy bacteria and having a healthy brain and be having less risks of Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes, obesity, and we could go on and on and on and on and on. So literally the bugs that are in us and on us are extremely important, not just for you digestively, which is what everybody thinks about, but literally how your immune system functions, how your brain functions, how much inflammation is in your body, whether you retain weight or lose weight, or whatever it is that your goals are. So I'm gonna let Dr. Brown take over from here and he can be the kombucha expert. So I wanted to start out, you know, before we get into kombucha and how to make it and what all the benefits it does, I just wanted to start out by, you know, kind of discussing why we need to have this conversation now, right? I mean, we've lived for thousands of years without talking about our microbiome or our gut bacteria. So why all of a sudden are we having this, this trouble with, you know, these bad bugs in our guts? We're all stuck with processed yeah. foods. Too many antibiotics. Yeah, yeah, all the above. So you can see up, see up here, I'm going to kind of compare then versus now. You can see, you know, our ancestors ate tons and tons and tons of bacteria without, without even trying. They didn't have to think about it. There was no, no special thing they did. You know, they, had, they got nat healthy bacteria from the soil. They got you know, healthy bacteria from growing on the plants and the vegetables and all those things that they ate. You know, but nowadays, you know, we're, we live in a largely sanitized environment, right? We don't have dirt floors anymore. You know, we sweep, we vacuum, we pretty much Clorox wipe everything down, right? I'm sure everyone here has had parents or grandparents that tell them, you know, go wash your hands before you eat, right? So what they have done back in the day, they would probably wash their hands in a stream or they probably had some community basin. I'm sure it was real cleanly and healthful. But you know, we use so much antibiotic soap nowadays. It's you know kind of amazing we still have hands. But so we consume sterilized food. You know, we add all kinds of preservatives to all our foods. You know, you go to a grocery store, anything in the center of the store, just covered with preservatives. And those foods that don't have the preservatives, we usually cook to death, right? We kill anything that might, anything beneficial that might be on them, any enzymes, you know, that might help break down the food as we eat them. You know, me and my wife occasionally make uh, sauerkraut, and it never fails. You know, after it's done fermenting and it's all, it's all good and healthy and just filled with bacteria and all those healthy enzymes, you know, someone al someone's always like, all right, well, let's cook it and eat it up. And, that just kind of defeats the purpose, right? <laughs> so we go back to sterilizing and so we need to incorporate more foods in our diet, you know, some more raw foods. You know, I'm sure it's not often that we go a whole day with just eating raw foods. And really whenever we do that, you know, we, we lose out on all those enzymes and our body can be, become depleted in those things. It's kind of t almost a burden to break down some foods. So another thing we do. We chlorinate our water supply. Does anyone drink city water? Yeah? Oh, yeah. OK. So whenever I first moved back to Katanning, and uh, we were kombucha sitting, you know, we didn't even think about it. And we used chlorinated water whenever we made our tea. <laughs> yeah. We had a two-year-old colony, pr pretty thick. You know, it probably had a pretty, pretty good growth on it and completely killed it. So, so what, do you, what do you think chlorinated water does to us when we drink it? Right? Does it kill all those healthy bacteria in your gut? I mean, yes or yes? Sure. Yeah. So, some really, real easy tips for chlorinated water if those 
for those people that do drink it. It's really easy to take care of. You just fill a pitcher up with water, put it in your fridge, you know, anywhere up to five hours, and that chlorine will dissipate into the air, and you won't drink it. So, real simple. You can even use a activated carbon filter, pretty inexpensive at Walmart. That'll also filter out most of that 